Welcome back. Now, before we go on to the politics, there's one more thing I need to tell you. On the, on the fateful night of February 19th, when this operation on the wrong patient happened, yeah, the surgical staff uh, who are doing, uh, who are undertaking this operation, called the ward to confirm a few things. Yeah, they did not call them once, they did not call them twice, they actually called them three times. Meaning that even as the surgery started and even as it was happening, the doctors started uh, seeing telltale signs that uh, there was something wrong. They probably found that the symptoms were all wrong. Yeah, there were no symptoms of uh, what they were operating the, patients, the patient for. Yeah. Now, put yourself in their shoes. You're, in, you're, you know, you're a surgeon, you're already in the operating theatre, you've already opened up somebody's skull. What did you do? You call the ward where this person was uh, actually being uh, admitted, yeah? And you call to confirm, yeah, is, do, you, do we really have the right patient here? And you see, in such matters, the ward is the absolute authority on this. Now you're the surgeon, you call the ward, and they confirm to you, not once, three times, yeah, yeah, that's the patient, that's the correct patient. As a surgeon, you just have to do your work, yeah? And you just have to assume, because once in a while, there are special cases which come up. I mean, we, <laughs> this world is full of wonders. And doctors more th know that more than anybody, yeah? Now, <laughs> I know you might not believe this, but there are very many instances where a doctor examines a patient, yeah? They just look at the condition of that patient, yeah? And then in their mind, what they tell themselves, it's a miracle this guy is still alive. You mean this guy is still alive? He's even talking. <laughs> that happens all the time. So as a surgeon, you want to proceed with this operation, and you're also curious. You want to know, I, he did not have this symptom. I, this was missing. I did not see this. And yet they're saying this patient has X. Yeah. So you, you operate to find out, eh? so that you also take notes. Maybe you'll even do a special paper that actually there was a very special case like this and this, this guy came in for this, and there were no symptoms at all. But when we operated, sure enough, we found this. Yeah, that's what happens. So don't for a moment say or tell yourself that surgeon was not qualified or they're incompetent, they should have noticed there were no symptoms, they should have stopped immediately. <laughs> You're not a professional. You are not there. You cannot pass such judgment in a hundred years. Yeah, and I've just explained to you one very good reason why the whole procedure carried on. Yeah, and indeed there could be other reasons. I'm not a doctor. Yeah, but I'm sure doctors would come up and give us many other reasons why it happened. But the long and short of it is that these surgeons were being misled, and they were misled right from the word go. They had no chance. Yeah, of ever recovering from this uh, being misled. Okay, and this is why the spotlight has to shine on the ward that admitted the patient. Yeah, that is where whoever engineered this, that's where they did most of their work. Okay, and indeed this is a very telltale clue and a very important clue that suggests something absolutely horrifying and something that will shock you to your bones. This is very clear evidence that this was not done by some uh, uh, river road crooks, yeah, some thugs out there looking for a tender. No, this was done by somebody very high up in government. That is the truth. What was used here was state machinery. Let me just leave it at that. Because any ordinary crook trying to do something like this, uh, this patient mix-up, yeah, would not have succeeded. Yeah, it would, there, there's no way they would have succeeded without very serious state machinery behind their scheme. And that should be obvious. Which brings us to the politics, okay? Now, Reef Valley MPs, led by the Senator for Kericho, Aaron Cheriot, have come out and very strongly condemned, yeah, the sacking, <laughs> not really the sacking, the sending on compulsory relief of the chief executive officer of the hospital, uh, Lily Koros. Now, of course, Lily Koros hails from the Kalenjin community. And what these legislators are saying is that this thing is unfair. Yeah, that actually what is happening here 
is that the whole scheme was to get her out of the way. Why? So as to make room for those people looking for huge tenders, you know, the tenderpreneurs who profit from Kenyatta National Hospital. Apparently, Lily Koros has been blocking uh, their schemes. Lily Koros has been doing the right thing. Yeah, this according to the Rift Valley uh, legislators. And somebody has decided, no, yeah, uh, we need to keep on making our money. Somebody has interfered with our gravy train. Therefore, get rid of them. Now, the reaction of the Rift Valley legislators yeah, brings out something very clearly. Number one, it confirms that actually there's more here than meets the eye. Yeah? It confirms that all this campaign uh, to paint Kenyatta National Hospital in poor light, and especially the administration, was engineered. Yeah? And uh, the legislators give an answer why it was engineered. It was engineered to get the top executive out of Kenyatta National Hospital so as to make way for somebody to make money. Yeah, that's what it is. As horrifying as it is, that is exactly what this is. Okay? Now, after the break, we'll dig a little deeper uh, into the politics here and uh, tie up this so that we understand completely what is happening at Kenyatta National Hospital. See you in a bit. Now, I'm sure many of you are sitting out there and you're saying uh, the reason why Aaron Chiriot came out with this is that some people came from the Rift Valley, they approached him, they told him to wait on Amalizo, do something as legislators, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Actually, that is not what happened. The truth is, when Aaron Chiriot is representing somebody very powerful, very high up in the government, yeah, and we're going to find out who in a minute, yeah, and this, the answer to that will just shock you. Yeah, we're going to find out that in a minute by tracing Bwana Aaron Chiriot's political career very briefly. Yeah, there's some very interesting things here. Now, youthful Aaron Chiriot was first elected as a senator on March 7th, 2016. Yeah, that was uh, the year before last, the year before the general election. Okay, now the reason why those are by election in Kericho is because the then Senator Charles Ketel was suddenly appointed as Energy CS in uh, Uhuru Kenyatta's cabinet. And he accepted the appointment. And that is why Kericho voters had to go back to the polls to elect a new uh, senator. Now, before that by-election, Aaron Cheriot was unknown. Okay, Indeed, going into that election, the hot favorite to win was one of Paul Sang of Kanu. And indeed, if you looked at things on paper, I mean, the entire Nandi community was uh, behind Bwana Paul Sang. Yeah? If you looked at everything on paper, that was a done deal. However, 
Rift Valley voters were shocked when actually the person who got elected was uh, the youthful Aaron Cheriot. One of the first people to congratulate uh, Aaron Cheriot and one of the people who was very close to him during the campaign is uh, Senator Kipchumba. Kipchumba Makomen. Does the name ring a bell? Yes, these are all DP Ruto people. Now, the official election results were that uh, uh, Cheriot garnered 109,358 votes against Paul Sang's 56,397. However, Kanu came out uh, <laughs> very angry and they made a statement to the press and they said we have evidence to prove that this thing was actually rigged. Yeah, and what happened, listen to this, there was a, uh, what was used was a joke geometric geometric progression formula yeah that uh, multiplied the results of the loser uh, by a factor of 1.5 kanu people said they had evidence to prove that actually paul sang won easily by a landslide over 100,000 votes yeah and that in fact the person who was declared winner only got 38,162 votes not the 109 he was given 109,000 now wait a minute, this sounds very familiar. This is exactly what happened during the August, ag fateful August 8th, 2017 elections. Yeah, Indeed, one of the reasons that got uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's election victory nullified was that uh, the opposition lawyers, Raila Odinga lawyers, were actually able to prove that what was used was a ge ge uh, geometric progression formula that uh, multiplied the votes of the loser. Yeah, they also proved that the votes of the winner were being uh, minus, taken away. <laughs> yeah, we also that at the Supreme Court. So what that means is that what took place in Kericho on March uh, in March 2016, March 7th to be exactly 2016, was just a dress rehearsal for August 8th, 2017, on a larger scale. What? Now what is more? is that a lot of people, they have heard some people say that uh, this fraud, vote fraud, uh, stealing of votes, this massive fraud against the Kenyan people, had uh, Bwana DP Ruto had nothing to do with it. That actually this was a whole uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta operation. Now folks, there you are. There's evidence to prove, yeah, the people who really engineered the fraud against the Kenyan people on August 8th, 2017. There's evidence for you in black and white. And it cannot get clearer, and it cannot get more conclusive than this. Ah, watu, ambao anafanyanka pap, 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 and they produce a president for you. These are the guys. They did a dress rehearsal in Kericho, yeah, and they got away scot-free, yeah. They did that on, uh, in 2016. And therefore, they're just warming up yeah, to deal with Kenyans on August 8th, 2017. This is really what it is. Now, back to the Kenyatta National Hospital. Now, obviously, uh, we can say without doubt that Aaron Cheriot is a Ruto man. He's a DP Ruto man. We can also say that there's no way Aaron Cheriot can open his mouth and get involved in such a major campaign without the blessings of DP Ruto. Now, get this. Don't for a moment fool yourself that uh, the Rift Valley legislators and Lily Koros are angels. They are not. And therefore the only conclusion we can come to here is that this is a battle for tenders at Kenyatta National Hospital between two different camps, both very, very powerful in Kenyan national politics. And these guys don't care. So what if somebody died? So what if this happens? So what if women are raped? They don't care. Yeah? But they have the machinery, they have the state resources, they have everything to be able to carry out their battle, yeah, which is now clearly at the Kenyatta National Hospital. Now it is not a lie that DP Ruto is a marked man. Yeah? There are very many who are resisting his uh, win, <laughs> his foreseen predicted win in the 2022 presidential elections. There are very many people resisting a DP Ruto presidency after Uhuru uh, exits uh, the scene. And unfortunately, the latest front of that very, very vicious battle is the Kenyatta National Hospital. Extremely sad. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.